back. College. I was talking to some uh, guys from my class, and uh, I asked them some, about some ideas to cry fear. About like, I, I was talking to them about that I was making a train sequence. Then I asked them like, how do you think it should end? And uh, one of the guys said, well, let Simon climb up from the broken train, the crashed train. And I was like, yeah, that's a nice idea. So then I came home and I started working on that and uh, now it's in the mud. So thank you for the guys from college.
really proud of this forest, I'm really happy about it, because I really managed to make it so you feel like you're in the middle of a forest, and uh, I've always wanted to create a forest like this, because it really looks like a Swedish, typical Swedish forest. And uh, I actually made a forest that's on my backyard, uh, I, w I went there and took a lot of photos and w I came home and started creating the forest. And uh, I'm very proud of it. I, this is a forest I've always, always wanted to create.
From the beginning I had created this scene with ma the map. Uh, I was dropping the TV with a funk train on a funk breakable uh, box and uh, it looked very shit because when the box broke it just uh, spawned a lot of gibs and the rope kind of just disappeared, it looked all looked shit. And the only thing to really make it look good was to animate it from 3D Max. And uh, James suggested me to do that. Although I modeled the box, or I don't know if James did it, but uh, James did the most work. He, I modeled the box, he kinda animated it to uh, look like real ragdoll, and then Jordi uh, helped us to animate the rope. So it was really a full teamwork thing here, which I really liked this part. Creating it was very fun. This area is pretty interesting because me and James were discussing about having enemies which was falling down from trees. And uh, I always wanted to have uh, hanging corpses just falling down on you. I even wanted to have it in Afraid of Monsters, but uh, now I managed to make it and it's all scripted with map. In. The area over here was supposed to be like a realistic underground basement area, but uh, as I was mapping I didn't get bothered making it realistic so I just made it unrealistic with this nightmare ma uh, section. I wasn't sure if it would fit because it randomly just got surrealistic in the mod, but 
who cares? You know, the entire mod is not real anyway, so having this surrealistic area was pretty nice and it add some variations to the mod and it was fun to do and uh, it's also fun to play I guess. I've always wanted to have realistic lightning in my mods, and this time I managed to do it. And how I made it was I recorded uh, some real lightning outside when it uh, was lightning, and uh, then of the video I recorded, I stopped frame by frame and recreated it in a model. So each frame of a model, uh, I mean each frame of the video was a specific model and the, the lightning you see in the mod is the sky changing model every frame like the, in the video I recorded so I got it looking exactly like the real lightning from the video I recorded and it was pretty tricky and also fun to do and the, the result is fantastic Welcome to Mölnberg Mental Hospital. Uh, this mental hospital is very interesting because it's a hospital from a real place. And uh, that place is Beckenberga. And uh, it's a mental hospital pretty close to where I live. And uh, yes, it lies in Sweden. And uh, in the 1930s, 
that hospital was the biggest mental hospital in the whole Europe uh, at that time. And this, this building right here is uh, one building of the many buildings that Beckenberga contained. And this specific building is the only building that's left from, from Beckenberga because everything else has been uh, demolished. Uh, so the interesting thing with this building is that it looks exactly like Beckenberga in real life because I was there taking photos and, and stuff and uh, you can see in the video cast uh, of how I made it when I went around there taking photos so I made it in real time in video cast so you can watch it if you're interested in how Beckenberga looked like in real life and uh, yeah, have a nice tour in this hospital puzzle is kind of a nod to old school survival horror games in which almost all of them required some kind of puzzle in which you had to reroute the power. In this case, it's simply moving all the poles or whatever the hell they are to the bottom position. Players can know that they're connecting the power by there being a spark effect every time that you move it to the correct position. I came up with this puzzle idea and I was sitting at the table with four pencils trying to move them in independently of each other, trying to make it the hardest possible combination. However, if you know what you're doing, it's kind of easy. The floor, however, is fictional. It's all made up, and uh, the one who designed it is James. 
he designed the bowling hall, the bowling alley, and the basket ball arena thing. Uh, we decided to keep it uh, as the bottom floor, and the only thing that really looks like Beckham Barrier, the mental hospital in real life, is the other map. Uh, the first and second and third floor, and also the attic.
more astute players among you may realise that the cutscene where you interact with the Doctor about the P345 pistol that you need to get from the bowling alley is actually different depending on whether or not you have it prior to seeing him. If you do have it when he first sees you, you tell him that you already have it and he knows about the gun in the bowling alley. If you don't, then he agrees to go and get it. It's touches like this that makes me proud to be part of the Cry Fear Dev team. The interesting thing with this scene is that you can either choose to give the weapon to the doctor or to keep it. And what it really uh, means with this option is that if you give the weapon to the doctor, it means you trust him. And that's why you get the good end. And if you keep the weapon, you, it means that you don't trust him, of course. And um, that's when you kill him in the end. That's, you know. This puzzle is damn nice if I do say so myself. It's in multiple parts. The first part requires getting the two halves in the numeral place, putting them together to get one of three randomised weapon code uh, sorry, telephone codes. You then phone the number on the telephone and that triggers a cutscene where the sick version of Simon in the opposite window holds up a board with a code on it. You then use the telescope to read what's on the board and use it to activate the keypad at the top of the asylum. The thing about this is that not only is the number on the board randomly generated, but it won't end the cutscene until the game knows you've actually looked at Simon himself with the telescope. This is done by using a simple trace line from where you're aiming with the telescope.
Simon, the pills by itself won't make you feel better. You have to do something more than that. I recommend that you try a new mother treatment called cognitive therapy. What's that? Well, it's a set of exercises you do. A way to forget the past, all the bad memories and anxiety you have. Are you interested in books, Simon? I don't know. Why? All right. I just wanted to find out because I want you to try out something. I want you to write a book, a book about how you feel. Do you think you can do that? I guess so. I can try. Oh. No. 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 Andreas, or uh, Rumpel as you may know him, uh, gave me an assignment on, f on a Friday before I was going out partying in one weekend. He needed me to make some AI voices for the doctor that was to be used during this uh, intense fight that you just went through. And if I remember correctly, I was compelled to finish recording before I went out, uh, although I had, uh, had already had a few beers. Uh, it started out really simple, like I always do, breaking down the lines I've been given and uh, trying to reflect the scene with my own voice as good as possible. But uh, as I'm not an experienced voice actor, I have felt that some of my work did not have the quality I demanded for myself. So I improvised. For grunts and pain, I hit myself with a belt on my arm. For a darker and more scary voice, I'd smoke before recording and try not to clear my throat. You have to make do with what you can. Thank you. 